Hi, I'm Kevin, the developer of Starcom Unknown Space. Uh, a month ago, instead of the regularly weekly news update, I did a video on anomaly image creation. It took more time than a regular update, but players seem to enjoy it, so I'm going to try to do these as time allows. In this video, I wanted to show off my favorite bug. I'm calling it my favorite because it was interesting to track down, had a relatively straightforward fix, but mainly because it felt appropriate to the game's genre in a way that I'll come back to at the end of the video. Okay, first the symptom. The bug was reported by players as the entire screen going almost completely white upon leaving the station, like they were suddenly looking at the sun. I think I had seen the bug once or twice, although until users reported it, I suspected it was something specific to the editor. Uh, so with player reports, I was able to confirm that it happened in the build, and it was somehow related to shields. Shields use a custom shader, shown here. It's not that complicated. A combination of some Perlin noise, a Fresnel effect, and then some brightness increases when it gets hit. It did seem a little odd to me that it would white out the entire screen, since fragment shader bugs generally are confined to the object material, but again, it's also not too weird for me to be surprised by some nuance of transparency rendering. Also, when shields are down, their model is scaled down, so it seemed possible that this was maybe a divide by zero artifact. With enough information from players, I was able to replicate it, so after a few experiments eliminating some possibilities, my next step was to use Unity's Frame Debugger. This lets me step through the events in the rendering pipeline that produce the output of each frame. For example, here it draws the non-emissive modules, then the emissive modules, transparency, etc. Working backward from the end of the frame, it's obvious that the whiteout is the effect of Bloom post-processing. Bloom is basically a blur applied to pixels whose color exceeds some threshold value. Normally this should be a fairly subtle effect, adding a bit of a glowing halo to brightly lit objects, like shown here. But in the frame debug we can see that the ship modules are completely blown out. And not every module, just the modules using an emissive shader. Okay, backing up. One of the many changes from Starcom Nexus was that ship modules now use a custom shader that allows me to easily give each faction their own ship colors, as well as letting the player customize their own ship's appearance. For performance reasons, there's an emissive and non-emissive version of this shader. Emission is the shader term for what you generally perceive as emitting light, although actually it just means that the shader ignores lighting, so the color pixels will be uh, displayed regardless as to whatever is going on with the scene's lighting. Uh, the emissive shader is used on any module that looks like some part of it emits light, such as the ship's reactors or windows. And at one point I added an intensity property to the emissive shader so that a ship could show its power level. So if you drain your batteries, the ship goes dark. If there's a derelict, it's completely dark. Uh, as power levels go back up, the energy levels are visible. Generally, it's a pretty subtle effect. Okay, finally, now that I knew where to look, figuring out the cause was relatively quick. What was happening was that the shield logic was calculating the recharge rate, limited to the difference between the maximum shield charge and the current shield charge. This amount was drawn from the reactor and added to the current shield capacity. But if the player removed shield modules from the ship while the shields were already charged, this difference could be negative. That is, the shields would feed energy back into the reactor. While the reactor lim logic limits production to maximum capacity, when you draw energy, it doesn't check this, pushing its reserves past 100% in an ever-growing feedback loop. And this surplus energy was reflected in the ship's lighting. And this is why this is my favorite bug. It is exactly the sort of thing that happens in Star Trek or other sci-fi shows. We've reversed the polarity in the shield capacitor, which has overloaded the ship's reactor. And because nothing has a fuse in the future, all of our lights blew up. 
Okay, this was a pretty quick video, but I hope some of you found it interesting. As a reminder, the new Kepler build is available for opt-in testing for early access players, and I expect to promote it to default in the next couple of weeks. Combined with Jupiter, this will be the first default build that includes an ending to the main storyline, so I'm looking forward to hearing player feedback on that. I don't know when I'll do the next video log, but as always, you can follow regular weekly updates on Steam. Thanks for watching, and thanks for playing Starcom Unknown Space.